Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Okay, we can start now. So, <clears throat> interesting. Okay, what we are talking. We are talking about experience uh, this. Okay, as I mentioned above, there are outer, inner, and secret signs. Remember, that appear at the time of death. So very briefly, again, the outer signs related to the experience of the body, the inner signs to the experience of, related to the experience of mind, and the secret signs related to experience of luminosity, nature mind. But, <clears throat> According to Pardu teachings, these experiences appear very shortly. So that means almost impossible to recognize by people who are not practitioners. Um, but Dzogchen practitioners, will recognize um, these secret, secret signs, which is the nature mind at the time of death because of their practice. So they can remain in the death meditation, so to speak, which is called Tukdam in Tibetan. Tug means mind, tam means secret, the secret mind or luminosity. So, you know, I have person, personally seen this after some great practitioners, death meditations, this took them. Um, as I mentioned above, when the mother and child clear lights are unified after death, that meeting is the mind of luminosity. Okay, which we call the uh, if you remain in that luminosity, which we call tukdam. Now, for advanced meditators, after their this took the meditation, they attain enlightenment. But ordinary beings don't recognize this luminous awareness or took the meditation at this moment. Then what will happen next is delusions and habitual patterns arise. Because of that, they are born into the mental body of a pardo being, which is to wander between death and rebirth until it's time for the next life according to Pardo teachings, okay?
if you think the details of those dissolutions are complicated, all you need to do is to simply rest an open and relaxed mind and simply use the instructions you have been practicing in your daily life. So there is uh, not much more that you can do beyond that. So Karma Langba said, when the bardo of death appears to you, you should let go of grasping and attachment and fixation to everything. This is very important to remember at the time of death. Do not be attached to your property, your family, your friends, and include even your body. So if you're holding onto the appearance of this life at the moment of death, this is the cause for the pain of this pardo. And if you can let go of your attachment and simply rest in the nature mind, then this pardo is definitely no longer the painful pardo of dying. Then you don't need to go through all these experiences of the pardo of death. As Patamba Sangji said, Chiva Chiva mind Namjir Sanchong Jayans. Chiva Chiva mind means death is not death for a yogi. Namjir Sanchong Jaya. It is a literal enlightenment for them, for yogis. So that means when the consciousness dissolves into luminosity, those great yogis recognize the ultimate nature mind, which is nothing other than the dharmakaya or ground luminosity, and they will recognize it. That's why death is an enlightenment for the yogis. Mlaripa said, death leads to the path of liberation. Death brings joy to you who is practicing. Milarepa was terrified death. That's why he very much, you know, focused on practice. When he thinks about death, it's very scary. So therefore he you know, um, focused in practice rest of his life. And then after he attained enlightenment, he said there is a song. First time when I hear death terrify me. But now death brings joy to me. So that is exactly what we will experience if we can die in a such a manner. But those people who don't have realization of the nature mind, they will go through the experience of the pardo at the time of death. So therefore, we should try to eliminate attachment 
and practice nature mind now in this lifetime. Otherwise, your mind is overwhelmed by attachment and then you're going to lose the opportunity to recognize the nature mind. So you, your worldly concerns such as family, home, wealth, repetitions, or anything else that is greatly valued during this lifetime is totally useless at the moment of death. At the time of death, you can no longer rely on these worldly things. You cannot trust any of that. So you have to investigate your own mind in order to see how much you are grasping at this worldly life. You look at yourself your emotions and your thoughts to see how you are doing with your practice. So, you probably know that this pardo, the death, dying whether it is painful or not you can look at yourself and how you're doing with your practice right now how much you are grasping attached to this worldly life you can see that right So there are three different kinds of practitioners with different capacities. So whatever your capacity is, it is important at the moment of death, you try not to feel attachment, anger, or any other emotions without any negative emotions. Keep your mind pure as you can. Okay? You keep that in your mind. As you know, there are two main causes of death. Either your time has run out, like when a, you know, lamp runs out oil, then the flame dies, or temporary circumstances cause your death such as accident or sickness, so on and so forth. So there is a big difference between natural death and accidental death. But at the time of death, a peaceful mind is very important without feelings of fear or sadness or regret or no matter if you are Buddhist or not. If you believe in rebirth, most people don't, but if you do, then a good state of mind at the time of death is very beneficial. If you are a Buddhist, then the only thing that you need to do at the time of death is to remember the instructions. The most important thing to remember at the time of death is bodhicitta. Bodhicitta. 
And the best time to prepare for death is right now. That's it. The most important thing to remember, bodhicitta, the time of death. And best time, prepare for it right now. Then when you die, you will automatically remember your bodhicitta, your practice, then you don't, you, you are no longer attached to worldly life. Everything is not important, except bodhicitta. Mladipa made this aspiration. When I die, may I die alone without anybody to cry and without anybody to mourn and suffer. That's his aspiration. Such a great practitioner doesn't need to anything else. It is better for them to be without any disturbance you know if you are a great meditator uh, according to the bardo teachings if you are a great meditator you should not touch their body because they know what to do at the time of death so you disturb them just leave them alone they know what to do if you're best practitioner. If you're middle practitioner, then don't touch their feet because there is nine um, doors on our body and somebody about to die and you touch their feet they may focus on that. And then their consciousness goes down there. So if you are ordinary practitioner, you touch head and pull out a little bit their hair or whatever touch hair, then they focus on their mind there. That helps to remember, um, think about lineage or Buddha or whatever. But that's why Malaripa, his aspiration, you know, I want to die alone without anybody because he knows what to do. So it's better for them to die without any disturbance so they can liberate their minds. But of course, we are not like Malaripa, so we will need more help. We will need our teachers and our spiritual friends at the time of death. They might, you know, but if you don't practice during this life, and you just rely on others to do, for example, like rituals and prayers for you, it will not help very much, I think. So it is much better if you practice for yourself during this lifetime. So preparation, sometimes it helps for to think about your death, you know? So you just sometimes, you know, lay down and close your eyes, think about death, think about end of your life. You visualize that your, your death is approaching and you're 
going to die within a few minutes and think about your attachment, your desire, or any other emotions and ask yourself, what is the most difficult for you to let go at the time of death? Whether it is your, your, your body, it is your property, it is your family, your friends, etc. Then you think deeply about what kind of practice would help you to let go of the thing that you are attached to at the moment of death. Why then sometimes think about, ask yourself, why am I attached, so attached to this thing that I can't let go? What is the reason? So you just lay down, think about like all this. That's also another good preparation. Then you will clearly see whether you can let go of these things or stir you attached to them. Then if you touch them, then remember, you investigate. Why? <clears throat> so then you think about oh, what kind of um, practice that can I think about and let go of my attachment. whether it is renunciation or, or bodhicitta or the nature mind or the impermanence, whatever. And then you keep that practice in your mind and develop it more and more. That's how you think about death and prepare. Otherwise, practice is not something that will come easily to you if you have not familiarized yourself with it beforehand. So whatever occurs, during the dissolution stages, it doesn't really matter if you are able to rest in the nature mind. When the ground luminosity manifests, you are naturally liberated, right? So that means your pure consciousness dissolves back into the ultimate reality. We call it Dharma. Dharmata, which is the completely pure nature of mind and all phenomena. When you recognize this Dharmata, the ultimate reality, that's what we call enlightenment. Okay, enlightenment is not only an escape from temporary forms of delusion, but also from the very root of delusion. That's why we need to recognize the nature mind and we need to practice Dzogchen. And through that, we will be able to achieve Dharmata, this Dharmata. <laughs> Dharmada. Otherwise, you know, what is the point of recognizing the nature mind if we are not able to liberate ourselves from the state of this kind of pardo? What is the point? That's why practice Dzogchen is the best. Combined with Bodhicitta, Malaripa said, sentient beings are samsara. 
all are the great practitioners in nirvana. But in nature, all are equal. Samsara and nirvana are equal. So there, therefore, Karma Langba said, when the pardo of death appears, enter into the unborn space of self-arising awareness. Okay? That's the Dharmada. So we have been talking about preparing for death during daily life, your daily life, when you have the opportunities. So it's really important because if you have the habit of practicing during this life, then it would be easier to practice when you pass away. So you will be able to rest your mind peacefully just as you do now in the pardo of meditation, remember? You just rest your mind on the constant, the in word, word, pure awareness. Same. Um, also, if you want, you, sh you can pray that you will not go through a painful and difficult death and suffer in lower rebirth. You can sort of develop your aspiration, your motivation, you know. Now, and again, more importantly, when you know that the time of death is near and approaching, you need to start to prepare yourself by having the intention to stay as calm as possible. You know, most people can't because when they know they're going to die, then they create all this sadness, panic, and fear, and all of that. But as a Dharma practitioner, you know what is the best at that moment. Having a peaceful and positive state of mind is the best, important. Because the very last thought that appears in your mind has a very powerful influence on your after-death experience. If, if your last thought is negative, okay, such as, you know, disturbing thoughts, negative emotions, ego cleaning, then you will find yourself in a negative, according to Pardo teachings, negative environment, and they will obscure your experience of this Pardo. If your last thought is positive, then you will find yourself supported by environment where you feel confident and stable. So remind yourself how important this moment of time is. And that moment is an important moment for you. So therefore, you need to prepare yourself by making the aspirations, you know, whatever to remain calm, be present, be mindful, maintain your motivation, and maintain your meditation and try not to think anything about your worldly life, such as your family, your friends, your property, etc., etc. So you have to let them go in your mind completely. 
you have no choice. Try to remain peaceful and calm as much as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm repeating this again and again because it's very important. But at the same time, you must understand that your intention and mindfulness will be interrupted at times by physical pain. Because of all the remember, the dissolutions of the elements, therefore, when your body starts to lose the connection and starts to separate not only physical pain, but also mentally, you have sadness, fear, you know, fear of death, fear of what will happen after death, etc. You can create so many thoughts. If you are like this moment, this life, if you think too much, that habit, you, you develop that habit, and then the moment of the, the, the death, you also create all these thoughts, mentally, physically, pain, because physically, you know, you are going to lose these connections. Mentally, then sadness, fear, and all of these things. So it is important to Reinstant, you know, your intention again and again. Don't think that doing something once is enough. So that's why you lay down sometimes in your couch and then you think about death. And then, as I said, go through all this process. Investigate yourself. Investigate your mind. And then pick one that is important, like the practice. Then practice that again and again and again. So you should prepare some practice that are easy to remember at that time. You may have very peaceful death. You may have very painful death because you never know. So for the preparation for the death, there are some practices where you may see a big challenge, very difficult, but there are other practices that you can really do very well and they're very beneficial. So again, at the time of death, it's, it's, it's completely, as I said, essential to generate bodhicitta and to maintain your motivation. Okay, then you don't have much recognition in your mind, then supplicate your teachers and lineage holders and confess your negative karmas, dedicate your merit, all of that. And more importantly, as I said, as Karma Lamba says, you know, don't be attached to anything whatsoever and then rest if you can, your awareness, your rigpa, dharmata, the nature mind, try to maintain your ultimate awareness. Akasangarbha asked Buddha, how should a bodhisattva view the mind at the moment of death. Then Buddha replied, beautifully, I will tell you this thing. Buddha said, at the time of death, the bodhisattvas should cultivate the perception of ins insubstantiality since all phenomena are naturally pure, okay? The bodhisattvas should cultivate the perception of great compassion 
since all phenomena are contained with the bod within bodhicitta, the bodhisattvas should cultivate the perception free from thoughts, since all phenomena are naturally luminous. The bodhisattva should cultivate the perception of non-attachment, since all things are impermanent. And the bodhisattva should cultivate the perception of not searching for Buddhahood elsewhere, since the nature of mind is Buddhahood. That is what the Lord Buddha suggested on how we prepare for the time of death. These are my preparations, and these are what I will try to do at the time of my death. I can make it more simple for you if you want, so that you can remember them easily, right? So there are three important practices you should remember when you're facing death, if you are a Buddhist practitioner. The first practice is rest in the nature mind without any grasping, any attachment whatsoever, okay? And try to maintain ultimate awareness is the best way to say goodbye to this life. But if you can't do that, then the second practice is generating bodhicitta and having a good inspiration so that in your next life, you will be born as a great bodhisattva. You may remember your past life. You may remember when you took bodhisattva's vows. You may remember, you know, oh, I took bodhisattva vows. I had a bodhicitta mind. I am a bodhisattva. You may remember all of that in your next life. I mean, most of these great practitioners, they remember when they took bodhisattva's vow. So that gives you enthusiasm to help others. That's the purpose of life, purpose of reborn. So try to die with a bodhicitta mind. And it also is a good way to end up with this life, okay? If you cannot do either of these two practices, then the third practice is, at least you should say some supplication prayers with a devotion to ask for the blessings of enlightened beings so that you will be able to find your next rebirth without so much fear. When you genuinely supplicate the Guru and the lineage, you feel the presence of their blessings. That makes your mind calm. Then you are confident they will be there with you. And that helps you become fearless and relaxed. The teachings say that you can use devotion as a path. When you connect with your heart of devotion, then in that moment, you are connecting directly with the awakened wisdom of the Guru and the lineage as well as your own awakened state. Therefore, devotion is seen as a key 
that unlocks the doorway to the most profound experience of the mind. So it is important to practice devotion and recite the supplications now. In this way, you develop a habitual connection with the practice so that when you enter this pardos, your supplication comes easily and naturally. But if you are not successful in practicing any of these instructions, then the next pardo experience will appear. That means when your mental body, you have no recognition, you go through all this dissolution, you know, the, the outer inner secret signs and all go through that and you don't remember your practice, you don't have any capacity, then next part of the experience will appear when your mental body um, of the pardo appears to you, it is important to recognize that the pardo experience are not real. That's next you have to remember. You should see them as like dreams. And you should recognize them as illusions. It's like a dream, you know, when you have a dream, the dream can make you happy or suffering, right? So, you know, unhappy. If you don't recognize as dream, that's exactly in the Pardo experience. If you don't recognize the Pardo experience, oh, they're not real, they're illusion. Then this Pardo experience cannot hurt you, harm you. But if you believe this experience, pardo experience is real, then you're going to suffer. It's like a dream. So if you don't recognize all this pardo experience, just your perception is like dream. If you will be able to, you will not be able to do that, then you are going to suffer. So when this mental body of this bardo appears to you, if you make everything real, and if you believe that everything appearing to you is real, and if you don't recognize this Pardo experience as illusion, then you're going to suffer, according to Pardo teaching, say that. It's like when you are dreaming, and that very moment, very moment, you truly believe that what you feel what you see, what you touch, what you taste, whatever, what you hear, everything in that moment, you truly believe that experience is real. Sometimes you cry in your dream. and your pillow gets wet in the morning when you wake up. And sometimes while you are sleeping, you have a dream, whatever. You get up from your bed and you walk few steps nakedly. And then when you wake up, you are not in your bed. Because you truly believe your dream is real. But the moment when you wake up, you realize all your dreams are not true. 
But it doesn't matter. As long as you don't recognize your dreams, you will experience them as real and they can make you suffer, right? It's very easy. I mean, we know that. That's exactly the same, this Pardo experiences. All these Pardo experiences, not real. They're exactly like dreams. So you have to put that in your mind. But, you know, as long as you recognize Pardo experience as illusion, then they can make you suffer a lot. So it is very important that you recognize the pardo as the pardo meaning the pardo is like dream and the net, a natural pardo of this life when your negative thoughts arise it is not necessarily a big deal but at the time of the pardo of dying it is a big deal because you are gradually losing your connection with your body. So that means that you are, when you are approaching death, your consciousness is leaving your body. That means the physical body is gone and you feel absolutely alone. There will be just uh, this mental body which is why it travels to a place as soon as the thought of that place arises. So at that point, your mind is not calm. Then you will, be, you will not be able to focus on the part of experience and your mind will be unbalanced. So you will not be able to put your mind where you want to be. Then the appearance of many disturbing thoughts will obscure your experience of the pardo of dharmata, which comes next, okay? Then there is definitely no chance to recognize all other Pardo experience. Um, so that's that's the process, kind of, you know, after death. So you have all these dissolutions, the signs, outer, inner, secret signs. And then there is a, this chance to elaborate your mind, all of that. And you have all these different kinds of meditation, you know, instructions. None of them didn't work. then the next pardo will appear, which is pardo of dharmata. We're going to talk about tomorrow. So, and another important thing is, uh, important thing um, you should know is that whether someone is a great meditator or just an ordinary being, it is extremely important that the body not be moved as soon as they die, according to Pardo teachings. Because a person with the best ability to meditate remains in their natural mind and enters meditation. This word, remember, took the meditation. If their body is moved or touched, it would disturb their meditation.
and people can't die all at one moment, right? There is, you see, there is an inner dissolution process that takes place over several days. And ordinary beings sometimes, you know, they are unable to leave their body as soon as they die because of attachment, attachment to their body, attachment to, you know, their belongings and so on and so forth. And some are also unable to die quickly because the, the subtle consciousness remains in their body for a number of days. And sometimes people also can die because of the sickness. So therefore, if someone's body is disturbed before they are completely dead, they may feel suffering. I'm telling you these things because preparing for your death is very important. You need to prepare now and keep it in your mind. All right, that's that. Now, meditation. Same thing, you know. So when you meditate, first, first step is correcting your motivation. Then try to rest and calm your mind and concentrate on it. Again, be mindful. Concentration is awareness, right? Which is free of concept. Awareness is an inner light that makes you to see things more clearly. So if you have that kind of mindfulness and concentration, then you have the perfect foundation and solid foundation for a meditation. And when you do that, one of the first thing you will notice in your meditation is how often the mind, your mind wanders off. And also during meditation, different feelings, different thoughts will arise, but you should recognize it. And the great meditators, what they do is um, not to let any feelings or thoughts arise without recognizing. You cannot control them, you cannot stop them, but recognize them. Then it doesn't matter what kind of feeling, thoughts arise, and how many times your mind sort of, you know, lost and wander away. Now, what is the instruction for this pardo? 
Remember, it says when the bardo of death appears to you, abandon all attachment, get grasping. That's the instruction for this bardo. So the most important when the time of death comes is eliminate attachment and grasping and make your mind very pure. And you should not allow any negative thoughts to enter your mind at the time of death, because the last, as I said, last moment of your mind is very important and crucial. So now again, maybe visualize a channel same as last time this channel stands in the very middle of your body at the top it opens straight out into the aperture of the top of your head in the channel at your heart center. Remember, you visualize the light energy. That is light, that is light, uh, red in color. Represents your consciousness or the essence of your consciousness or the nature of your consciousness, whatever you call it. So, then visualize above your head, pray to whichever enlightened beings inspires you the most. Either Guru Padma Sambhava or Buddha Shakyamuni or Buddha Amitabha, whoever you have the great devotion. And then consider that this enlightened being represents all of the Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, and the Masters. Then you focus on the red spear of light, and it goes up slowly, and eventually coming out from the top of your head. Remember. This red light is the essence of your consciousness. You, this is mind training. You are you're, 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 you're training your mind, right? For, for the death. So the light comes out top of your head, then dissolving into, let's say, Pamasambhava. So Bhamma was heart. And then relax there without thinking anything until your next thought arise. Okay? So your mind goes up, your consciousness goes up, dissolve into Bhamma was heart, and then be sort of inseparable then relax there without thinking anything. Not a single thought in your mind. So just completely focus on this awareness, relax there until your next thought arises. You may can, you know, relax there one second, five seconds, or one minute, or five minutes, whatever you can. Don't worry about the duration, the, the period of time. Just to focus on the quality.
relax there. You do this more and more and you can relax more and more without any single thought in your mind. That's how you purify your negative, uh, the, the, the abandon your attachment and grasp it. So if you relax without any thought in your mind, then you make that development or habit, then slowly your attachment grasping will dissolve, you know? That's how you abandon attachment grasping at the time of death. And then don't worry, when your thought, when your thought comes, don't worry, you go back again and practice it again. Okay, so meditate on that, okay? Just to make sure that you understand your mind, which is awareness. combined with mindfulness. So meditate on that for 10 minutes, please. <laughs> 